welcome to the Mindful Evolution Podcast. I'm Leah Drew, your host and mind-body healing guide. This podcast is for the awareness seeker ready to go deeper, create change, and feel more empowered over their physical, mental, and emotional well-being. My intention is to be a catalyst for you as we explore topics surrounding holistic health, mindset optimization, trauma healing, emotional intelligence, and much more. I'm so grateful to have you here and support you as we evolve in mind, body, and spirit. Let's breathe in and out. Now, let's dive in. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Mindful Evolution Podcast. I am your host, Leah Drew, and today I have a fellow woman who is also a healing guide herself, and Casey Hibbard is with us today. Casey is the head storyteller and podcast host of Rebuilding My Health, where she highlights inspiring stories from others who have successfully healed through natural and conventional approaches. Casey's goal is to educate and inspire others to go beyond conventional medicine to heal and treat the roots, not just the symptoms. Casey, it's a pleasure having you here today. Yeah, well, likewise, Leah, it's an honor and a pleasure to be on your show. I'm excited Mm -hmm. to chat with you. Same. I love what you're doing in the world with your podcast where you're really just shining a light on self-healers, people that have gone deeper into their healing journey because they've likely navigated some sort of pain, challenge, or really experience with their health that maybe others haven't been able to give them answers to. And I know that you yourself have navigated your own journey into health and wellness and healing And I'd love for you to share a little bit about that journey and how it led to you starting your podcast. Yeah, absolutely. So I unexpectedly ended up in the health world because of my own health crash. I think like like many of us who end up in the health world uh, kind of started with your own health. So um, after my son was born, it was probably about 10 years ago, my health just started unraveling and it was kind of minor at first but then pretty quickly started worsening I mean um, my gut was wrecked I was having arthritis uh, like severe fatigue um, just like muscle weakness like inflammation uh, to the point where at one point my my vision was blurry like the inflammation was was that bad. And when I went into the eye doctor, they were like, yeah, your eyes are just really inflamed. You know, there's like nothing other than that. It's, it's inflammation. So uh, that was kind of the wake up call. Like, wow, you know, this is this is like really affecting my daily life. You know, um, if I can't see well, if I can't like keep up with my family. And, and up to that point, I had been pretty active. You know, I was a hiker. Um, you know, not a serious runner, but I did run some, uh, I stayed pretty active. So I started, you know, going to doctors at that point, it was in the conventional medical world, we had insurance. And so I started seeing doctors and really was not finding the help that I felt like I needed. I wasn't, you know, getting better. Um, one doctor, I went to a gastroenterologist for IBS. And he was like, well, just don't eat broccoli. I was like, all right, well, cut out broccoli. And that really wasn't solving the problem. So, um, yeah, ultimately I, I had to take what I consider some natural approaches to be able to, um, to get better. And, and really, um, you know, when I say natural approaches, you know, some of it, a lot of it is lifestyle and we can, you know, talk more about, you know, what that looked like, some of the foundational elements that helped me heal. But um, it really was a, a root cause approach, like going beyond what the symptoms were and trying to find 
Um, you know, what is the cause behind the fatigue? You know, what is the cause behind the inflammation and all that? So, um, you know, and you ask, you know, how, how that kind of led me to what I'm doing. And um, I have spent the past, you know, 25, 30 years as a writer, capturing stories and interviewing in the corporate world for companies. And I kept running across these super powerful health turnaround stories that were buried in private Facebook groups and decided, you know, these stories needed to come to light. And so really it was just a passion project. I'm like started reaching out to people and asking if they would share their story and created a site to start uh, documenting those stories. And really it's just, you know, evolved and snowballed from there to the point where I have hundreds of stories now captured between my site and my podcast. Hmm. Yeah, it's, I can imagine some of those stories were supportive for you along your journey towards health as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every single interview, I can honestly say, has taught me something. You know, if not something new, then like reinforced something or reminded me, oh, yeah, you know, I do need to pay more attention to you know, getting sunlight or, you know, whatever, like every single um, interview has been healing. And at the same time, it's healing for the person who is sharing their story. You know, I've heard people and you, Leah, you probably have this experience too. It's sort of um, so validating and healing personally to be able to share your story. You know, people would um, be moved to tears when they're telling me their story because of everything that they've been through and recognizing how far that they've come. And so it's pretty breathtaking to, um, you know, kind of walk someone through that and, and help them share their story. Yeah, how, how powerful to have a podcast where you're receiving the story and so they're receiving healing, you're yeah. receiving healing from listening and your right. listeners receiving healing as well. So it's just this this awesome little collaboration of healing you have going on. Yeah, it's yeah, like you said, I it's a really good point. It's kind of win win win, you know, all around for everybody involved. Um, you know, just yeah, to kind of like a little our own little healing circle of, of as people share their stories yeah I think it's so important to to listen right and there's that aspect that we run into in healing of of being heard and being heard is so 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 important in the healing process in relationships not just with yourself but in relationships with others as well right like there's a concept of needing to be heard by others and for those that have navigated this challenging experience of healing in, in different ways, right, based off of each individual's personal experience, by sharing, we get to lean into being heard by others. Mm -hmm. And there's so much that happens in that space of being heard where you can let your guard down, where you can really embrace like, yeah, this is what I've navigated. This is what I've been through. This is what I've experienced. And to be heard by the other person, you're actually being received. And that's one of the most beautiful things I find about podcasting is it's a beautiful space to allow your your individuals your your that come on to the podcast to be heard. And being able to share that experience allows them to keep growing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think that's a really good point. Um you know, that there, there is so much healing in, in speaking your truth and speaking your story, you know, kind of, kind of like, um, journaling, like getting it out of yourself, you know, sharing it with other people really is, is a healing experience. And then I, you know, would hope also that, you know, yeah, not just for the individual that it's healing, but they are, um, you know, they're, they're passing that on to someone else, you know, and that's like probably, you know, since humans have existed, you know, that that's probably the the way originally that people did heal. You know, you pass on the information, you share your stories and you learn from each other. And um, yeah, it's really powerful. Do you find that those that have shared their story with you do you find that there's a common thread of not being heard by Western medicine and Western medical doctors? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, 
you know, just the last interview that I did, she said, you know, she was, you know, she was sitting in her doctor's office and they, you know, exhausted like all the lab tests, they'd done all this stuff and they couldn't find why she was feeling so terrible, you know, so exhausted and having pain. And, and they looked at her and they said, listen, we've been talking about it and we really think, we think it's in your head, you know, like, I don't know that they said it in those words, but, you know, basically that's what they were saying. And that, and they were like, um, you know, we can't help you. We wish you all the best, but, you know, we really think that you, you know, you need to just like go to therapy or, and work through this. And it's, you know, and to be told, like, <laughs> it's all in your head. And so many people actually have, have reported that to me that, you know, their doctors kind of throw up their hands are like, well, because we can't find an answer, it must, it must be psychological um, <laughs> that you're having this pain or digestive issues or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that is a common thread for sure. People feeling like they're not being heard. You know, I mean, they have doctors have 10 minutes with you in the, in the managed care system. So there's not really time to be heard, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely see that as being one of the flaws of our Western medical system is like you're saying, right, there's there's not enough time to be heard, right? That's the first thing. And and also I, from my own personal experience, not being – feeling like I wasn't being heard by doctors, we're raised in this society where we are almost trained to put our trust and into and rely on the doctors, the PCPs, the – the medical providers that are in our lives. And to then continue to go to your medical provider with these symptoms, with this experience, with this pain, and to have them turn around and say, I'm sorry, I can't help you. There's, it, from my experience, there was so much disappointment in, in that engagement. And then later on to actually find out and navigate through what it was within my body that was challenged or that was not well, it it brought up a lot of feelings of resentment for me towards the Western medical system. And I can imagine that other people have similar experiences, feeling disappointed, feeling maybe betrayed, feeling any type of anger or resentment towards Doctors, is that something that you hear often in those you're interviewing? Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's kind of, yeah, the, the full gamut of emotions. There's um, feeling, you know, hopeless, hopeless and helpless because these people who have these years and years of training and should be the, you know, sometimes people go to like Mayo Clinic or, you know, some of the top places in the world and they are not able to be helped. So you're like, well, you know, I must be helpless or, or hopeless. Um, but then it kind of at some point with most of these people who found other avenues, it does kind of turn to um, some anger or, you know, at least some like drive, like, no, you know, I am not hopeless. You know, I, I'm going to find the answers, whether I have to do it myself. And most of these folks go into full on research mode. You know, they are researchers. They go, you know, down the rabbit holes on Google or wherever and really start searching for these answers, you know, and we're told like not to Google our symptoms, you know, <laughs> don't start that. Um, but really, you know, that's where most of these folks who ultimately succeeded start, you know, that's where we start these days is um, online, looking for answers. Um, gathering and, information. Yeah, gathering information. Yeah, yeah. And it, there is a point in almost every interview I do where the person sort of assumes control that's a big part of it to be like, mm. I'm not at the whim of this person telling me I can't be healed, that this is just the way it's going to be for the rest of my life. I'm, I am going to be the CEO of my own health or whatever you want to call it and call the shots and look for the information and find 
you know, the practitioners that are right for me that may be able to help me. So that's a big, big part of every story really is kind of that assuming, taking back control. That makes complete sense. I mean, you know, from my experience in my own, in my own journey and yeah, from working with many clients, that moment where someone chooses to take radical responsibility for their own personal experience is the moment that I see, just like you're saying, being the catalyst into a totally different experience, totally different symptoms. Their body feels different. Their mind starts to feel different. And they start to realize that they actually can be empowered over their ability to support themselves. And they don't have to rely on the doctors, the nurses, the medical staff to be the ones in charge of the way that they feel and the experience that they're having. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's a powerful turning point. And it usually is really the turning point for most people. When do you feel like you experienced your turning point? Oh, wow. That's a good question. <laughs> I'm not sure somebody's asked me that before. Mm, um, I love that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pro- you know, probably the turning point when I really think about it was the blurry vision. Because, you know, before it was kind of like, oh, I can slog through if I'm pretty tired. I, you know, just can't, can't do as much. But that, like, is so life impacting for your vision to be affected. And that's actually pretty common. I've interviewed quite a few people who, where like their, their health crisis kind of starts with a vision thing because the eyes, um, the eyes are pretty impacted by inflammation. So yeah, that was kind of my turning point where I was like, you know, no, I'm, I'm seeking out whatever resources I need. I'm going to do whatever I need to, to get the inflammation down quickly. So yeah. What was the first step that you took after that turning point? Yeah, first first step honestly was um, diet, nutrition, because and I and I see that a lot with folks because from one meal to the next, you can start, you know, I think I believe changing, the, you know, the input that's going into your body and reduce your inflammation. Um, you know, and it's not like the the one fix, but you can pretty quickly like go by, you know, and there are a lot of different anti-inflammatory diets out there. There's like specific ones uh, like the autoimmune protocol or paleo or walls protocol or whatever, but there's also a, a personalized element to it. You know, I, I react to tomatoes, like tomatoes like spike my inflammation. So Doing something like the Whole30 where you're, you know, eliminating a lot of stuff and just focusing on like really basic um, whole foods and um, yeah, high nutrient foods uh, for 30 days and then you start bringing them back and you notice, you know, what's spiking your inflammation that can be really powerful for people. Uh, So yeah, so for me, it was kind of a version of paleo. And um, I'm actually kind of still on, still on that because it just works, works really well for me over the years. Um, And a lot of my, you know, my brain is clearer, Uh, you know, but as I started, you know, experimenting with diet, like my, I had gut symptoms that were pretty severe at that point, like diet, like very quickly stopped my gut symptoms, you know, and I learned kind of going from there, like I, I, I still needed to like heal the root causes behind some of the gut stuff. I had gut infections and parasites and all that, but I stopped the symptoms pretty quickly by not giving my body things that were going to you know, exacerbate it. Mm-hmm. So, so that was one, um, gut healing, as I said, was really huge for me. I, I had to, heal small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, candida, H. pylori, parasites. Seems like there's another one I'm probably forgetting, but you know, my gut was kind of a mess, just kind of like bad bacteria because as a child I'd had tons of antibiotics. And so really working on that over time was huge 
for me. And with those two things, probably 75% of my stuff went away with an anti-inflammatory diet and gut healing. I mean, um, anxiety went away. Uh, the arthritis pretty much went away. Most of the fatigue, the gut symptoms. Um, and I don't think I mentioned, but I did have autoimmunity. I mean, it was it was turning up on my lab testing that I had autoimmunity. But um, over time, with all the work I've done, my autoimmune markers have, have gone down to zero. So it's been pretty powerful to see. That's awesome. I'm glad that you've been able to use nutrition and your food input to support your body and I think a lot of people forget that the fuel that you're putting into your mouth and into your body is what's going to run your system. It's going to run your organs. It's going to yeah. impact how your entire being functions. And for people that are navigating chronic pain, chronic inflammation, autoimmune disease, I completely agree with you. I think that nutrition is the number one most important thing to start to look at because that is the fuel. That is what's going to keep you going. It's what's going to make such a big shift in your physiology and your biochemistry. And I also very much agree with you on the Whole30. I started the Whole30 myself when okay. I really started um, shifting my inflammation and made that a point to work on. And when I did the Whole30, what I loved so, so much about it and what I think is so helpful is that it's not only teaching you how to feel – or how you do feel when you eat very clean, but it's also teaching you what to look for on labels as ingredients that are actually not supporting the yeah. way that you're starting to feel. And on top of that, it starts to introduce this idea of having a relationship with your body and being able to communicate with it and learn and understand how it reacts and responds based off of that input that is going into it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. so I, I find it interesting that you bring up the Whole30 because I think a lot of people feel so overwhelmed when it comes to nutrition. Like you said, there's so many freaking diets out there that's yeah. like, eat this, don't eat that, don't eat this, but eat that, right? Right. And at the end of the day, it's like, just start, start being clean. Start yeah. eating clean and start simplifying so that you can really understand how – Things are influencing your body. Start understanding seed oils. Start understanding additives. Start understanding how colorings are influencing your nervous system, your body, your brain. Because everybody's going to be a little bit different. And I think that the whole 30 really starts to bring that into view for people and recognizing how all of those additives and sulfates and sulfites and all these things that we're putting in our body on a regular basis are actually not helping our body with the healing. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, it brings up a point, like you have to get hyper aware of your own body, you know, like I'll say to my husband, my inflammation is, up. you know, I just, I need to like, like really start paying close attention to my diet and you know what I'm doing. And he's like, how do you know your inflammation is up? You know, I'll be like, well, my hands are kind of puffy today. You know, and that I can't, that's one of my signs or my toes hurt, my toes get puffy. And, um, you know, maybe it's different for somebody else. Maybe somebody else has brain fog or, or whatever, but, um, it's like, I, I, it's like a machine or something. I need to calibrate like, you know, if we go on vacation and I like eat a little bit off of my normal diet, I, I will notice that. I'm like, okay, I need to like re get, you know, back to my baseline and like eat the way I know I need to eat. So you really do you have to pay attention to your body, maybe track everything you're eating. There are apps to do that now. Um, track any weird symptoms that pop up and go, hey, yeah, every time I eat tomatoes, that that happens. Or, you know, maybe for somebody else, it's dairy or, you know, there's some... Um, there's some like common triggers and then weird ones like some people can't eat cantaloupe, but you know, it's just it's such a personalized thing on some levels. But there are certain diets like we talked about with the Whole30 where um, a lot of people see results because it's just a very, you know, back to basics approach. 
Yeah, the very, the very basics. Yeah, yes. and it's hard. It's not easy. It is hard. It's and it, and then it's so eye opening realizing how much you're actually off from from that baseline, right? From those basics. And I, I'll, when I really started paying attention to the ingredients I was putting in my body, I I was in a bodybuilding show when I first got out of college. Wow. Oh, my gosh. And it was a really um, – looking back, I didn't do it in a healthy way. I was thinking that I was eating all these healthy foods and putting these healthy things on my food. And in reality, all of the things that I was putting in my body were filled with hormones – were filled with additives, were really like designed to look healthy, but in reality, the, the the breakdown was not healthy. And when I started diving into the Whole30, it was so eye-opening to me to recognize how many things I was putting in my body that I actually thought were healthy that really were not and were only contributing to my inflammation, to my back pain, to my poor sleep, to my anxiety, to my depression, to all of these symptoms that, that you're talking about here as well. And when I started eliminating those things that were influencing that, all of my symptoms started to reduce. Yes. Wow. And yeah. I think that we live in this world where all these, all these things are promoted to us in every inch of commercialism. <laughs> and they're promoted to, to look healthy. One of the biggest things that I see, like makeup, like yeah. makeup is filled with toxins and chemicals, but oftentimes promoted to be this this healthy thing. And it's yeah. it's not. Right. And that happens across the board with food, with products, with yeah. lotions and creams and makeups and all of the things. Yeah, absolutely. I learned from someone I interviewed on my podcast, the word natural is not regulated. Like anybody can use the word natural or all natural on packaging and it gets us, you know, like, oh, oh, it's got natural flavors in it. So it must be good. It must be all natural. So really do have to read, read those labels. Those are the areas too that that will will get you is like when someone puts natural flavoring on an ingredient list like guys question what those things are and it's if, like, if it's <laughs> if, exactly if it's ambiguous chances are it's not clean yeah right it actually does say on some ingredient labels natural flavors and you're like okay i don't know what that is because yeah. the idea, like, right, if you were to look at natural flavoring versus artificial flavoring, your mind's instantly going to go to, oh, natural flavoring, so that's good for me. Yeah. But in reality, right. if you don't actually know what that natural flavoring is, it might not yeah. be good for you. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So with all of the all of the interviews and all the stories that you've been able to share through your writing, through your podcasting – what are some of the, the top things that you see all self-healers doing in their healing and recovery process? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about diet. I, I mean, I would honestly say that nearly every person I have interviewed has had to do some sort of diet change, you know, whether that's... And, you know, cutting out gluten, cutting out dairy, or, you know, finding their own food sensitivities, something that re basically reduces the inflammation. So that's a huge one that's really across the board. And, and I'm going to go a step further. And I know this, is, this can be controversial, but um, almost every single person has had to cut out gluten. That's sort of like, I think I have like two stories on my site where the, the people are like, yeah, I still eat gluten. <laughs> And I'm always surprised. I'm like, wow, <laughs> like, great. You know, that is, that's working for you. Great. But like so many people, uh, you know, I don't know. And there's, there's a big difference too, I think, to note between like gluten that we get here in the United yeah. States right. versus gluten that we get in another country. Because yeah. do, do you, do you want to go into that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, we can. Yeah, Absolutely. 
So what is the difference between, because I agree with you, like here in the States, gluten is so inflammatory. Mm-hmm. Um, but what is it about gluten that is different here versus in the United, uh, versus in other countries? Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, I'm not an expert on it, but my understanding, it, you know, there's a couple of problems is that we, we spray it with glyphosate uh, much more than other countries. Like, I, I don't even think it's... Um, legal <laughs> in, in some other countries or, or many other countries. Um, so yeah, the, the pesticides, uh, insecticides that are, are on it are a problem. And then I think also the, the, apparently the way the wheat is grown is different. So you, know, you may have heard that as well. Um, so like my mom can eat long fermented sourdough bread, but she can't eat like a regular bread because of her gluten sensitivity. So I haven't run that experiment, but um, yeah, something about the way way we make our, the grain, process the grain. So yeah, some people will say that they can, can eat gluten in Europe without that issue. So um, it's fascinating and yeah, and makes me kind of mad. <laughs> so Yes, I, I agree with you. It's, it, blows me away what we've allowed here in the United States, especially when it comes to diet, nutrition, um, planting with our crops. And we're genetically modifying a lot of things that we're putting in our body. Um, Corn, um, barley. There's so many things that we are genetically modifying, including gluten products. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so we have nutrition. We have gluten being one of the top ones there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so then kind of um, if I'm kind of going to name off like the top four or five things that I really see moving the needle for people in healing across the board. Number two would be would be gut healing. We've already talked a little bit about that. Um, you know, what, one story like just really comes to mind for me. There was a woman who had – rheumatoid arthritis. She was newly diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and she wasn't getting help uh, and she was in pain. She finally went to a naturopath and they're like, you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And she addressed that. And within, um, I don't know what amount of time, pretty quickly her pain went away. It was kind of a combination. She, she made some diet changes and addressed, you know, started like healing her gut and she doesn't have rheumatoid arthritis anymore, which is supposed to be a chronic illness that you just manage for the rest of your life. So that is a recurring theme. And it, I found that to be true for myself, that if you heal your gut, it's it's taking care of, of a lot. You know, I mean, I feel like my anxiety was gut related um, and, the, you know, lots of the inflammation. So... And yeah, so that's been really fascinating. And, you know, it could be, um, you know, just balancing your gut bacteria with, you know, probiotics. It could be healing the gut infections. It could be targeting parasites. So it just depends. But um, that's been huge. So did you find that, did you also have a like a gut healing element as well, Leah? Yes. Uh, for me personally, I actually don't have a um, – almost a third of my pancreas uh, I lost. Yeah, yeah, yes. And right. so it played a really big role in how my, my gut um, acts and reacts. And still to this day, I have to do a lot of things to – I should say I get to do a lot of things to support the optimal homeostasis of my GI tract because of that. Um, but yeah, my my gut definitely uh, needed some significant healing when I started navigating this journey. Absolutely, that was a huge part for me. Right, right. And what I found yeah. as well is uh, that many people might not know is your gut health has a direct correlation with lower back pain. And oftentimes, when your organs are not super healthy and well, when you're experiencing a lot of internal inflammation. That will lead to a lot of that lower back discomfort. Mm, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I had not heard that or realized that. So yeah, that is that makes sense. Though I mean, they're they're so closely, you know, located. They're close together. So it seems mm-hmm. like it would make sense. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. 
So the another thing I would mention, um, detox is is pretty key, and that's a part of my story that I I didn't quite touch on yet. But I spent a year kind of going through a detox process or detox protocol um, because I, I had some testing and it turned up tons of you know chemicals, some metals, glyphosate. Um, you know, all the stuff that, you know, there's like flame retardants. There's just our environment is so full of all of these toxins that I really, you know, spent spent time like trying to detox and support my liver and all that, um, you know, sweat, sweat it out in saunas and et cetera. The things that um, we know can, can really help uh, with that. And at the same time, try to reduce the toxic intake. So change it, you know, making sure I'm choosing organic and I'm um, switching, like we talked about personal care products and makeup so that I'm not getting the parabens and the phthalates and, you know, all the other bad stuff. Um, we distill our water now, like actually have a little thing I got off Amazon that, you know, just distills water. Um, and it's just, you know, super pure form of it. So just trying to, you know, do as much as I can to reduce that toxic intake was, was huge. Yeah. And so that, you know, kind of got me further. And I see that with a lot of individuals. Um, and if I could you know, mention one story that's super powerful for me, I interviewed a gentleman with Alzheimer's who, who actually no longer had Alzheimer's. He, he lived in the Bay area and he you know, started having cognitive difficulties, went to the doctor, they did this Alzheimer's test and he you know, scored really poorly on it. So they gave him an Alzheimer's diagnosis. He got his driver's license taken away because of that. He found a functional medicine doctor and reached out, had some testing and ultimately found that because he lives near an Air Force base, he had high levels of jet fuel in his system. And uh, also kind of was insulin resistant and had some hormonal imbalances. So they started addressing all these different things, detoxing, um, working on his hormones and some uh, metabolic stuff. And he got his, basically got his brain back. He went back to the doctor. He took the test. Uh, the highest score you can get on this cognitive test is a 30 and he got a 29 this, you know, second time he took it and he got his driver's license back and then did an interview with me. Like people do not think that Alzheimer's is something that you reverse within a year. And he did. So, uh, and that was, that was largely a detox story. So it's powerful mm. for sure. Yeah. Detoxification is definitely very important. And for anybody that is listening to this right now, if you are seeking detoxification and feel like your body needs that, I would encourage you to seek out a practitioner like a naturopath um, or someone, a functional medicine doc that can guide you through that because detoxification can be a tricky, a tricky um, journey because you want to, you need to make sure that your body is excreting optimally you're pooping properly, you're sweating properly, um, and that your your detoxification pathways are open before you start pushing things out of your system. Otherwise, it can actually make you more sick and experience some really intense and uncomfortable symptoms. So if detoxification is something that you are seeking, I definitely encourage you to seek out a practitioner to guide you through that. Yeah. 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 Really important point. Yeah. Yeah, because I've experienced that myself, like going going a little too hard and too fast on the detox process, and um, yeah, feeling feeling bad because of it. So and you, yeah, you have to sort of take it at your own pace and see how you're doing. Um, and now you know the mind body stuff uh, would probably be like the fourth pillar of of healing that I have seen across all these interviews. I mean, I can't tell you how many people have said. I did all this stuff and I got 80% better, but I really couldn't get all the way there until I healed my past trauma or got out of a stressful situation, you know, whether that's work or relationships or 
whatever, or address negative emotions. Uh, so yeah, we can, you know, talk, talk more about that. But I, that is something that I didn't expect. That was really fascinating and surprising to me to hear so many people say that. So. But. Yeah, the, the mind body healing is, is very important. In, in my opinion, and also one of the components like you're talking about here of homeostasis and optimal healing. And the, the fact of the matter is the body keeps a score on everything. It's not just in your mind. It's not just in your gut. Your mind, body is and your body are connected. You cannot separate the two. You know, and the, the most simple example I can give of this is Imagine you are not someone who loves heights and you then climb a really tall ladder and you're standing at the top of the ladder. It's going to give you that feeling in your your belly, kind of like you have butterflies or you're nervous. And you actually experience that sensation in your stomach or when you're um, stepping into a big event and you're about to speak to someone and maybe you get those butterflies in your stomach there as well. And you the the – the point is you feel in your body what you're experiencing as emotions and or what you're navigating in your mental state. And even with like a stressful situation, your body responds, right? And so like, for example, if you're being chased by a dog, your body actually responds the same way as if you were in a stressful conversation with your partner. Your body responds the exact same way. It doesn't matter if one situation sounds more intense than the other. Your body, your organs, your cardiovascular system, your your eyes, everything respond in the same way. And it's as if you're in danger. And when you stay in that place for so long, for example, you brought up trauma. When, when you have this unresolved trauma in your body for so long, your body stays in that state of, oh my God, I'm in danger. Mm-hmm. And that's oftentimes what leads to many things like fibromyalgia, um, autoimmune diseases, chronic symptoms that just seem to not go away. A lot of GI issues. I know a lot of people that have done every single thing under the face of the sun to heal their GI symptoms and things didn't change until they started going to trauma-informed, finding trauma-informed support, Yeah, really, to help with healing that trauma and taking the body out of that that stress response. And mm-hmm. so – I love how you're talking about all of these components, not just what's being put into the physical body, like the nutrition and the food and doing the gut healing, but also looking at these mind-body techniques that are also going to help with some of the other components, the emotions, the energy movement in your body, right? The the health of your, your brain, your mental health. It's all so important. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So critical and and there's not one path to it and you know you know that from all your experience personally and working with your clients you know it's um it's it's fascinating to see that you know there's not one way to heal trauma um there's you know so many different practices that people have mentioned um you know, in all my interviews, you know, I, and some of it is, especially if you've been sick for a long time, um, like there's something called the cell danger response. Like your, your body just thinks it's under attack, you know, still, even if you're well, it's, it's like, you have to like retrain, you know, neurologically, like retrain your brain to be like, you know, no, I'm healthy. Um, on a kind of a cellular level, which is fascinating to me. And I haven't personally gone down that, that path, but I'm really intrigued by it. So, you know, maybe, maybe that's the next thing, um, or just kind of like rewiring your, um, you know, your neurology to, to healing, like resetting it to be like, okay, yeah, we, we are healing cells now. We are not, you know, unhealthy cells. So, um, yeah, all that's been, been super fascinating. Um, and Leah, I have to say, like, there's, there's one thing that has to happen, like, no, you know, that I would say is a mind body approach and that's mindset. Really? 
every single person I've seen heal at some point had to believe that they were going to heal and go, you know, I know I can heal. And it sounds very woo-woo when I say when I say that to a lot of people that, you know, you have to have a healing mindset to be able to heal. But um, if you have a healing mindset, you're approaching everything differently. If you're like, oh, yeah, of course, you know, I'm going to get past this and through this. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, finding the, the right path out of it. But um, that is critical. So you, if you don't have that healing mindset, there are ways you can like work to get it, you know, meditation and, you know, other, other practices to kind of help you get there. But that is su- super, super powerful. Um, find, you know, found that for myself and um, so many of the folks that I've spoken with. Have you read the book Mindset by Carol Dweck? You know what? I think I did a long time ago, but I need to go back and look at that. I feel like that's one that was I That was one of to. my favorites. It was definitely one of the first books that I read in my mindfulness and mindset journey. And I... It, it changed my life at the very beginning of, of, of everything because she gave all these examples throughout the book, whether it be business and, and family dynamics and dating relationships and partnerships, whatever. She gave all of these different examples and it gave me the opportunity to like step into observer mode and look at, oh, wow, where are these areas that I actually am not supporting myself with the way that I'm thinking? And mindset and mindfulness and um, brain function, thought patterns, beliefs, et cetera, Mm -hmm. have become a huge part of what I do with my clients because I know the benefits that it yields. And just like you're saying, like, I'm a believer that you cannot get to the place of experiencing a healed body unless you are willing to look at those beliefs, unless you're willing to look at the emotions, unless you're willing to look at the mindset that you have surrounding where you are now, where you have come from, and where you can go to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is so powerful and in some ways so simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, it it is, it is it, you know, but um, it's something, you know, that you can can work to change and... um, just just carries so much weight in your healing is mindset your number five um yes yes it was kind of yeah mind body stuff and then mindset was mindset was number five yeah yeah definitely so just to recap for you we have some of the top five things that Casey sees in in the majority of the interviews that she has that are supportive in their recovery one being nutrition two, being gut health, three, being detoxification, four, being mind-body techniques, and number five, being mindset. So if you're in your own healing journey right now and you are looking to optimize that journey for yourself, I invite you to take a look at these five things and see and ask yourself, is there an area where I might be able to give myself more support or I might be able to go deeper into. And if you have any questions or any feedback on that, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm sure Casey would be happy to hear from you as well. Absolutely. Um, And so Casey, with these approaches, why do you think particularly the mind-body approaches, why do you think that these five things are so helpful for someone in their healing journey? Um, yeah, I mean, in, in really kind of when I think about it, you're taking the burden off of your body and letting it do what it needs to do. You know, that's what comes to mind for me immediately. You know, you're t- like taking the burden off, like um, eating better food, you know, that that takes inflammation out, um, detoxing kind of takes the burden off, um, you know, gut healing's kind of, yeah, removing blockers there. The mind body stuff is maybe removing trauma or stresses or negative emotions. Um, 
yeah and and then mindset is is kind of yeah like gives you like the fuel to then you know when you've taken the burden off your body to just you know move move through it and and start to heal um, you know and I, I i literally like when i after especially did all these things and and went through a detox process like i felt lighter <laughs> in my body you know maybe it's just like psychological but like i feel lighter because i didn't feel like like all these different things were were weighing me down whether it's um you know physical or emotional or mental mm. i love that you said that um something someone used to say to me often and regardless of whether you're religious or not and whether you want to use the word god spirit the universe this person used to say to me god's first task is to unburden you hmm. and to support you in unburdening yourself mm -hmm. and so again whether you like the word god whether you don't like the word god whatever word you want to put in in place there the first the first task of, of your journey is to unburden yourself. Yeah. And I love that you use that word burden because it's true. By navigating through all of these things, you, you really are unburdening your mind and your body in many different ways so that you can be an open vessel and a healthy vessel for whatever is to come in and come through. And yeah. um, in my experience, that's been a – Unburdening my body has been a huge bridge into spirituality for me personally. And I know for many that I've worked with, that's been an experience for them as well. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's powerful and has to happen and is, is so freeing for sure. Yeah. yeah. So if you could offer one thing that you believe would support the world around you with a more mindful evolution, what would that be? Wow. Um, I guess I would say keep it, you know, keep it simple. Like um, I think someone, especially if you're really ill, you know, you have a chronic illness and you're feeling terrible or in pain, it can feel like a mountain to try to get over that. But like my experience is that it's it's one choice at a time. You know, the in a couple hours, the next time it's time to eat, I'm gonna make make a choice to to support my body. You know, I, and later on I'm gonna make a choice to support my body by going to bed early or, you know, going to bed on time and trying to get a good night's sleep. Like and it doesn't have to be hard you can start making these small and simple choices or to you know meditate there are lots of free apps on you can get on your phone you don't even to pay for i i use insight timer and meditate with that and i've never paid for it starting to feel all guilty i'm like maybe i need to support them and and upgrade but um you know or go for a walk if you're feeling stressed there's just so many things you can do that are that are not simple and don't cost any money honestly. And in, in keeping things simple, does that also look like taking things like one step at a time? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause it can be overwhelming. So, um, you know, one woman I spoke with, I interviewed, she was like, okay, I'm going to spend a year on each thing. I'm going to spend a year just dialing in diet. Then I'm going to spend like the next year, like trying to move my body because she was almost disabled from or was disabled from MS. And, um, you know, year two, she started moving her body. You know, year three, she started working on trauma, that kind of thing. So like, yeah, you can you can just start with one thing and take it slow. Yeah, I know when I'm working with clients, um, oftentimes people there's a balance here. Sometimes people do one thing and they wait so, so long for this one thing to try to work. And oftentimes I say it's a combination of all the things that are going to support you on your healing journey. And it truly is, right? Just like we're talking about like these, even these with these five things, it's all the things, but keeping it simple in a sense of like, 
start slow. Like you don't have to throw everything at the wall all at the same time, knowing that all the things are going to support you with better healing, but you also don't want to stress yourself out. Just like you're saying, like, because if you're stressing yourself out, you're probably not going to support that process of healing. Yeah. That's, that is a super good point. You know, we've mentioned a lot of things here and it can feel overwhelming to be like, okay, taking all the notes, I've got to do all these things. Um, you know, oh, I need to be fasting. I need to be doing keto. I need to, like, there's, it's kind of like shiny object syndrome these days because we're, we're so much just thrown at us in terms of health information and like, oh, you feel like you need to be doing all the things, but, um, yeah, go slow, try one thing. Also, you don't know what's working sometimes if you're trying 20 things all at once, you know, just try, you know, try one thing and see how your body reacts and, keep it simple totally well Casey I loved having you here today thank you so much for sharing your experience if you are interested in learning more about Casey if you want to listen to her podcast if you want to follow her on Instagram I will put all of Casey's information in the show notes for you to find Um, She's at Rebuilding My Health at most platforms. So I'll put that in the show notes for you. And then Casey, you also have a freebie for for my listener today, correct? I do. Yeah, it's called Break Free from Chronic Illness Insights from Hundreds Who Have Done It. And it's just, I mean, find it right on the homepage of rebuildingmyhealth.com. And I can give Leah the link. Awesome. Well, I will put that in in the show notes for you. And like I said, if you're interested in going deeper and learning more about what the common threads are of those self-healers who have been able to navigate their journey through natural and unconventional um, routes and means, check out the freebie for you. So Casey, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening. And... I will chat with you guys soon. Yeah. Thank you, Leah. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Take care. Thanks. Thank you so much for tuning in with me today and for continuing to opt in to your inner work. If you found value in this conversation, please share it on social media or with someone you know that values both healing and growth. And I'd also like to invite you to join the Holistic Healing Tribe. This is my private community full of self-healers who are on a mission to optimize their physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Click the link in the show notes to join the tribe. And when you join, I'll send you my favorite things that have made the biggest impact on my health, my healing, and my growth. And finally, if you're anything like me and deeply care about seeing a more mindful approach to human evolution, please leave a review to help us reach more listeners and make a bigger impact on the world around you.